I would have done it with you. Yeah. From the Lodge Mahal in beautiful Austin, Texas, welcome to the Lodge live stream. Something a little special today. Okay. Two players. I just I, I, in the I, I, great game like known as PLO. Now. My name's Slick Rick, along with my partner today, Mike Brady. Mike, you ready? I am ready to go. You know, I think some people are going to passionately disagree with what I'm about to say, but many will agree. Parliament Omaha, not the most entertaining game to watch a lot of the time. That said, heads up, Parliament Omaha, completely different story. This is going to be awesome. First hand underway. Check, check. Jungleman turning two pair here, Dylan with the open ender. Oh, yeah. Jungleman yeah, once again yeah. rocking his. Like, like what is this look exactly? Has he labeled it? He, it's kind of a farmer. He's going for the farmer vibe. Six hundred. Sure. Six hundred. Dylan rivering the nuts here goes for a pot-sized value bet. Jungle man can beat some bluffs, but decides to let it go. So let's uh, talk a little bit about who is playing. Dylan Weissman, a upswing poker coach, winner of one World Series of Poker bracelet, and good friends with his opponent today, Jungle Man, who has won two straight $50,000 Players Championship WSOP, and he's got a bet with Doug Polk about a third straight. Did you hear about that, Mike Brady? I actually didn't. I would love to hear the details of that. 40 to 1. I'm not scared of you. Doug bet 1,000 to, to win 40,000. <laughs> uh, Jungle Man could no, win 40,000 to Doug's 1,000 <laughs> if he wins a third straight WSOP bracelet. Any no. bracelet this year? No, no, in the same event. No, oh, with a 50K. Okay, yeah, that's tough. It's I mean, it's roughly 150 player fields, so if he's getting 40 to 1, um, those odds don't sound too great unless he is, what, three, four times better than everyone else in the tournament? I'm a doomed doctor. Doctor Doom. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see these guys battle today. If I had to guess, Dylan is probably a little bit more in the, let's call it, nerd streets when it comes to heads up PLO. He probably knows a lot about how the computers like to play this game. Not to say that Jungle doesn't know a, a ton about that as well, way more than I ever will. But he's always been a little bit more of a field player, and he's got a lot going on. I would suspect that he's not grinding Hot Limit Omaha Sims every single day. So it's going to be interesting to see these guys battle. Maybe a little street poker on one side, a little more computer poker on the other. But that said, like such a goofy thing. Dylan is not afraid of playing some street poker too. Check. Straight. Straight win. for Jungle Man. Oh, give me a club. You know, you're dressed in, you're dressed kind of like Dr. Doomish. I, I was value betting the turn. I didn't even know that. I had two pair and a false shot, dude. You had two pair? Doomed. You had two, three, six, ten. You didn't have two pair. Uh, I, I do, it's a pair in the turn. I had two, six. I two pair, but I made a straight. Oh, two, oh, two six. That makes sense. Sorry, yeah, that's why I was confused. Raise. You have the doomed colors. Like I, you got like the weird green and black. I do. And the glasses seem to fit somehow. I don't. I don't really get it. <laughs> the or glasses. Bullish. The glasses are just. The, they're the vibe. Yo, yeah, well, you got the Doctor Doomed vibe. I was blasting Doom on the way here, so that makes sense. You were what? Blasting MF Doom. What's MF Doom? Oh, that's a rapper. Rapper. There you go, see? Before he checks out. Can I put them here? Mike and I are going to do our best to give you a ton of table talk today, as long as they're talking. Yeah, yesterday was like like 10 out of 10 tilt. From what? From losing, from just a lot of things going wrong, from like listening to Tara's, from... <laughs> Did you wait, you lost last night? Yeah. You were, you were on your comeback train when I was still commentating. Yeah, and then like a lot of bad things happened. Oh, unlucky.
Dylan with one of those beautiful single suit hands. Not good in Parliament Omaha. <laughs> Talking to him a little like earlier. A yeah, it was. And, you know, we've had some heads up matches, Doug's heads up challenge, and pretty much playing every pot. Um, is Omaha a little different uh, in that respect, Mike? Right. Um, you know, it's going to be pretty similar in that they're going to try to play a lot of hands. You may have noticed in the last hand, Dylan actually limped on the button with that. Uh, quad suit hand i believe the potlum omaha players call those hands that are all the same suit so if, if he's trying to limp the button that implies that he's trying to really really play a lot of hands because he's going to be kind of limping a lot of bad ones and then a lot of really really good ones as kind of a trap and then he's also going to be raising with kind of good and middling hands so that's kind of what i'd expect so here you see him raising because this is a pretty damn good hand the ace jack eight five double suited jungle's got a quite good hand himself another double suited gem Jack 10 8 6, a lot of straight potential. He's actually going to 3 bet it. Pot. Dylan's going to have an easy call. Or a 4 bet, even. Dude, that's very rude. Yep. He does go for the 4 bet. Dr. Rude? Question mark? Something like that. I feel like there's some kind of word there that makes more sense. He's going to flick in the call. Rude. This is where Pot Limit Omaha gets very fun. Four bet pot here, 5,400 in the middle. Dylan's only got 11 4 behind. Right there? Sure. What do you mean? And that is a flop. That you have in front of you. Is that what you're playing? I started with 15,000. Okay. Straight for Jungman. Flush. For Dylan. And with the pot already this big, I expect a lot of money to go in. See what size Dylan comes with here, or even if he decides to check. Counts out the call and flicks that in. 8,000 in the pot now. Dylan's got 10,000 behind. Ten of clubs on the turn. Doesn't change too, too much. Queen Jack now, a better hand than jungles. Give jungles a few more outs now with the boat opportunities. Check, check on the turn, and a four on the river. Perhaps Dylan giving Jungle Man some rope here. Jungle had a hand that he would decide to now bluff with on the river. Let's see what the Jungle decides to come with with this straight. Dylan's not going to want to do any more checking against this chuck check from Jungle Man. He's going to know he has the best hand here. Just how much value does he want to go for? Need to check. Straight. Oh, he does check back. I stand corrected. Watch. Wow. He is a scared player. That was a nitty check. Okay. So at least I'm on the right track. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a nitty check. Back. I have a straight. I have a jack and an eight and a five. Oh. That's one nice thing about Dylan. He does like to explain what he was thinking there. He was saying that it's hard for Jungle Man to have a straight there since Dylan has a jack, an eight, and a five. Those are cards that were needed to make a straight. So if Jungle is less likely to have one of those straights that can actually call his bet, he's just going to check back call me Dylan and win. For nothing. Plus, you never know. Maybe Dylan Jungle Man was trapping Dylan. on the river with the nut flush. <laughs> it's always possible. Dylan up an early 3,100. I know. Nice double pair no hand for Dylan. Was late. Double pair ah. and double suited. It was not. Three raises awful. and gets called. Yeah. I mean, These double paired hands are interesting because you always like, have four like, outs to hit a set on the flop. Me. And I like, didn't send him the address. I'm like, wow, maybe I have lost sleep. Yeah. You definitely don't seem like you're. 1350? It's not a great sign.
Nothing doing for Jungle Man here. He's going to get out of the way. Oh, no, Dylan, weak, tight, Wiseman. Folks, yeah. right now the Lodge is popping. We got the Lodge Championship Series well underway. Yeah, yes, Skull Mike is actually still in the 500K up. guarantees with 50 left. He's got a chance for 111,000 today. But coming up May 10th through the 16th, the main event. $2 million guarantee, $3,000 buy-in. Get to the Lodge. It's coming this week. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Not really good. Not really good. I'm just like stressed and stuff. That's not fun. Not too bad. Check. Big bet. It's the biggest one you're allowed to make. In one of the smallest pots possible. So something has to change. Dylan with the set on the river. Lush out there, straight out there. Possibilities. Trying to steal from me? Are you? Are you? Hmm. That's interesting. Two clubs, which is bad. I have six and a seven, which is bad. I have a two, which is bad. I have no hearts, which is bad. I also have a set. Dylan really mulling over his blockers here, and he decides to flick in the call. I have a set. I definitely bet flushes, though. I, I thought you. I called you. Okay, whatever. I, like, give up in a spot again. Never mind. Just, <laughs> just really annoyed lately. Good check, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that wasn't a, that was an actual, I had not the best set of sevens to call with. Huh? I had a flush draw and a straight blocker, so it was not not good set to call with. It wasn't a slow roll. That, that's why I'm annoyed, because you called anyway. <laughs> Just didn't believe you. <laughs> why, because I checked flushes there? Dylan, weak, tight, Weissman. Jungle Man's playing the lows, and there's the lows. That's why I'm annoyed. Double gutter and two pair. I thought what I'm supposed to think, and... Dylan's got top two, though. So Dylan, not much else going on besides that top two, so he is just going to call. And now Jungle turns the nuts. Dylan's got a straight draw of his own with a 6-4. Could river a 5 for the chop. Jungle comes with a near pot-sized bet. Dylan not going anywhere. $3,800 river coming up. The three doesn't change either player's hand. But of course, it does make a full house possible. Dylan has a decent hand check. to bluff with Two. and represent a full house, but it goes check-check instead. Should I bet? Oh, you have to start on the turn. On the river? Could be bet. I don't know. You have a deuce and a four? You were getting check-raised also. You would have made even more. Oh, Dylan was going to check-raise the river there as a bluff. I kind of suspected that. When you have two pair and the board pairs, it's a nice hand to check-raise as a bluff because you block the full houses. I mean, it's not like I bet many worse hands. Anastasia. Seems like... 
the pride of Ukraine and Palacio Anthony in the box today. Jordan is our game host. Yeah, you don't want to. You want to. I want to have an eight, right? Two and a four is not bad, though. I want to not have a four. The four should be fairly neutral. The the uh, eight should be good. Eight good. I think. Yeah, eight, eight good. And I probably want all pairs. Helps more than not. Third queens. Queens are going to do it. 1,400 and growing, watching this special. You know, I asked Dylan, who's a PLO specialist, Mike, if he if there's been many live streams. I know on online streams, but not video live streams of actual live poker of heads up PLO. You don't see this very often. It is definitely quite rare. I mean, the end of Pot Limit Omaha tournaments is one example that I can think of. Yeah. But you meant watch my th that's about it. I, I can't personally think of another time. Oh, you know what? I actually can. Long time ago, Tom Dwan did this. I think they called it the Million Dollar Challenge. It's a show you could probably find on YouTube. He plays... A few different guys, as we see Dylan flop trips here, jungle with top pair. And uh, one of the matches was against a guy who goes by Luck Express online. He was a recreational player who Tom Dwan used to battle a lot. And they played a heads-up match in a studio, I think, out in London. And it was half no limit, half PLO, if I remember correctly. So there was, there was that one. And that was around 10, 12 years ago. Wow. And I mean, I pay, I pay pretty close attention to poker, so I would <laughs> I would know if there were there were many others, and I, I, I can't think of any others. Yeah. Jungle picks up a gutter. Pot. Twenty-two. Dylan's gonna pot it now. That ace nine. Tough hand for Jungle. Easy to get away from. Yeah, the One thing you're gonna really notice from these the players six, today, seven, even in heads up eight, PLO, they're gonna really focus on five, a term five. Dylan likes to use. The robustness of their hands yeah, so it's not just about having trips or it's not just about having a straight or just about having two pair it's about the other cards that you have with your straight or your two pair or your trips do you have a backdoor flush draw as well do you have good blockers to the hands that could beat you do you have good blockers to the draws that could potentially come those things are all really important when you're thinking about how to play a hand in potlum at omaha and both of these guys are very, very theory-oriented players, so that's going to be something that they regularly are considering in the middle of the hand, and you're even going to hear them talk about it after the hand. You guys have already heard them quite openly talking about strategy. These two guys are not protective of their strategies at all. They put a bunch of content online, the both of them. So it'll be interesting to hear them talk and, you know, see them play as we see Jungle hold up with his straight here. He's never really in much threat against Dylan on this hand. 125. 125. I have a shit hand, I don't want to call. <laughs> the thing is, you just have a better hand than me bluffing, so I don't think I can. <laughs> I jack eight for my best two cards, and I wanted to call. I mean, jack eight probably, I mean, probably beats my bluffs, I don't know. Yeah, it might. That's what I was thinking about. The eight, I want the nine instead of the eight. Jack nine, I probably call. Jack nine. Raise. And this is coming soon? I'm in dire need of a massage. <laughs> it feels like it did. so much pain. Emotionally or physically? I'm not in that much pain right now. I was in a lot of pain yesterday. Emotionally. At least you enjoy being around me more than Terrace. Maybe that's the reason why you're not in as much pain. I mean, that was definitely a factor. <laughs> I 
Like, holy <laughs> shit. I think one thing that occurred to me is, like, I should probably cater to him, actually, a bit. But um, it, it might have been a good thing that, that because he's so in his head, and he just doesn't, do, he's just probably not taking anything personally. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think so. So I was just pro I was being a bit obnoxious back. It's like maybe this, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's like the good side. Talking about last night's 11-hour live stream, where Jungleman was here till the wee hours of the morning. Wow, I did not know and that you guys went 11 hours yesterday. Hell yeah, yes. good job. They wanted to keep going. That's kind of the, the nature of the beast with live streams, right? I mean, sometimes we're done after four hours. Sometimes we're playing 12. You, exactly. you really never know. Exactly. Check. Shout out to our amazing production team. And of course, you guys over there in the booth. Sticking it out Check. When, it, when it needs to happen. You said it's cold, right? Very cold. Yeah, and I, I just started shivering a little bit. Yeah, about, to get, about to get colder. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> like, I don't even know how to interpret that. Isn't there like a like some kind of freeze character on the Fantastic Four? Yeah, Mr. Freeze. What? Mr. Freeze? Is that a fan, is that a Fantastic Four character? I don't know if it, that that is a superhero. I'm pretty sure. That's like a supervillain for sure. Mr. Freeze. Is that who you want to be right now? Um, reminds me of something they say in Bobby's room. What do they say? It'd be an interesting battle between Mr. Freeze and Doctor Doom. Probably Doctor Doom would win. Have you changed? Did you sleep in that costume? Uh, no. <laughs> Overalls are not very comfortable. Set of kings here. Hot. Is that what you're supposed to do? For here? Jungle Man? I think so. I think you're right. You tell me. What are you going to do with a bunch of shit? A little wrap there that got there for Dylan. He's got the straight. Man with a very robust hand here, top set and a flush draw. And he rivers the flush. Dylan's low straight goes down. Chips are a thousand dollars, puts four of them in there. An interesting one. You're saying you have King clean combo with king high flush. So that's I think. That's out. Dylan kind of on the right track here. Here with the king of spades, like a king. Mm-hmm. 
a tough one. I don't have a spade in my hand. I also don't have any clubs in my hand, though, so that's pretty good. I don't know the answer to this question. Is this straight good? I can ask you. I don't even have a good straight, I have a bad straight. Those other straights check. Uh, I'm like supposed to fold and I don't want to, but whatever. Nice hand. John gets away. Made it. Folks, 1,600 people watching? I said good bluff if you made it. Oh, uh, before that. I said, I, I, I'm supposed to fold there, and I really didn't fucking want to. Yeah. <laughs> I have the lowest straight <laughs> and no spade. Let's go ahead and do a roll call. Where are you watching Weird today spot. from? We'd love to give you Thanks a shout out. Sizing. You weren't saying you had enough flush. You were saying you had, like, an ace, a king high flush or something. Or I don't know if I'm playing that spot right. What? I don't know if I'm playing that spot right. I don't know if you are either, man. That was weird. <laughs> you gotta know how that works. Weird player, weird spot. That's what I'm here. That, that's what I'm here for, though. I'm here for the weirdness. Oh. What am I supposed to do there? Am I supposed to pot or check? Really? Oh, probably. Or small. I mean, what's the? I just don't think there's that much difference between four and like small. Check. 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 I do. If, I mean, maybe not for your individual hand, but for your whole strategy. I almost bit small. Yeah. No, small. I kind of like smaller. I don't know why I did. I don't. I do not like what you did. It's okay though. Glad they could come to an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Still in fires with a pair and the nut flush draw here. Jungle man, not much going on. See the thing that's allowed. People. Let us know where they're watching. It slightly warmer in here. Yeah. Appreciate all over the world. Madrid, Spain, Vancouver, Pittsburgh, St. Louis. I'm just shaking from nerves. Mom's basement. Like that, shouldn't, that shouldn't heat you up. No, I'm shaking cold. Thank you all. Doesn't Thank like, you. Doesn't like Doctor Doom go to like an alternate dimension or something yeah. like that? He's the supervillain. Yeah, but doesn't he uh, go to an alternate dimension and he like try to you know like harness some crystal power or some bullshit? You calling me a hippie? Huh? You calling me a hippie? <laughs> this is... Man, it's really rough these days to try to not insult people. I don't know what size to bet here. I normally bet half pot. It doesn't matter too much. When Dylan has the ace yeah. eight four two on this board, he gets out of the way. Yeah, they can. It's half pot, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it can be half. You can also do uh, three quarters. Yeah. You can fold like everything with three quarters. I love these guys. <laughs> the hand ends and they're immediately like, what's the right size on that flop? Hmm? And then they're both just like nerding out no, over. No, it's a bad flop for me. It's a good flop for me. How they should be playing that spot in general. 300. I'm going to guess it's a lot more of a rigid view on how poker works than a lot of people have. But that's often what it takes to get to like the top. Hot water with lemon. Thank you so much. I'm in dire need of masseuse. Dire. Flop flush for jungle man. Second. Something to just warm my hands. Perfect, thank you. A dire need of a masseuse? Yeah. When you're, when you're prima donna two, you'll understand. <laughs> this jungle man goes to when you're, when you're the bar. It's okay, he doesn't need to be here to play. Pretty even, 2,000. <laughs> Nothing, I was saying you don't need to be at the table. Folks, let me tell you about something really exciting. Play with my eyes. On the 15th. You should try. A week from tomorrow. We're having a special ladies tournament here at the Lodge, $500 buy-in. But you know what? After all the prize money is collected, Bill Perkins is going to toss in an additional 50000 into the prize pool. How about that? This special ladies tournament, the winner will have also the opportunity to pass a 10-question test about his book, Die With Zero. If she passes, 
she'll get a $25,000 sponsorship for the year to represent the book, Die With Zero at Tournaments. Pretty amazing stuff. Thank you, Bill Perkins. Yeah, and the plan is to stream that final table, assuming everything works out. Yeah, Jamie okay. Kerstetter will be here. Yeah, Jamie's coming out. I think Caitlin Komeski might be hopping in the booth. I don't know if we've talked to her about that yet, so sorry if I'm just breaking the news to you now, Caitlin. Here's a As we see a, a cooler flop here, Dylan with trips with the ace kicker, Jungle Man with kings full. Only 800 in the pot, but that's going to explode pretty quickly here. Dylan raises the flop for Jungle's $200 bet. So before the flop, Dylan limped in here with his rainbow hand. Jungle Man raised it up to 300. Dylan called. Jungle Man continuation bet on the flop. Dylan raised. Jungle Man called. And now a welcome sight for Jungle as he checks again on the turn and faces a pot size bet from Dylan. Does he want to put in a raise now or just call? You're awesome, thank you. Sure. Sure. Goes check, check on the river. I was really scared of that. That's something good. Cards. Well timed check back from Dylan on the river there. He loses a $5,700 pot, but it could have been more. But that would have been disrespectful to you. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't be disrespectful. Doctor disrespectful, that's me. That's, that's, that's not good to be. <laughs> Doctor disrespectful. What was your kings? King, king, what? King, king, ace, nine. It's a good hand. go with Dr. Disrespect, that's a good one. That's a that's like a very famous Twitch streamer. Really? Yep, Dr. Disrespect. I can't do that one, it's already taken. You could be Dr. Disrespectful. <laughs> it wouldn't be good for SEO. Why wouldn't it be good for SEO? Because it's already Dr. Disrespect. If somebody's super famous, why would I pick almost the same name? Little SEO lesson from Dylan there. Yeah, it's not. It wouldn't be. Wouldn't be smart for me. Are you untilted now? You're winning. No, I'm not tilted. You said you were earlier. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ravi. That's funny. That is a, that is a pretty hand from Jungle there. Ace King Jack Ten double suited. He's going to raise it up over Dylan's limp, and Dylan okay. just folds. Every time. Told you, I'm scared. I checked back ace three that hand. It's normal. It is normal. It's a very good river card. Pet pot on the turn. I was not folding, so. Huh? I was not going to fold if you potted the turn. I don't think I should pot the turn. Really? What if I have a three? Am I supposed to pot that turn? Probably. It depends on your side cards. Really? I think so. That seems ridiculous. That seems really ridiculous. Thank you. To pair for Jungle Man here. Yeah, Dylan with a nice looking rundown hand, but he doesn't hit too much on the flop. That said, any five. Four, seven, eight, 
9 or 10 will give him a straight draw on the turn, so a lot could happen for him, along with those backdoor clubs. Faces a $1,000 bet. He's going to flick it in. Be a turn card. He doesn't realize how bad of shape he's in, of course. And there's one of those cards, the 5. He's now got a wrap. 7, 8, 9 in his hand. He could hit a 7, 8, 9 or 4 for a straight. Plus, it's not totally irrelevant that he has the 6. Hot from Dylan. 29 times 4, right? So. Four, 30, 30. Oh, sorry. You know, Jungle could be behind here with two pair, but he's got at least four outs to hit a full house that are going to be good, even if he is behind. And he's also got 6-3, so he has a straight draw of his own. First all-in moment today, Dylan. All in here. I have a wrap. All right, how many times? Twice. All right, sure. I have a two pair and a... He's going to run it twice. What do you have? King three. Yeah, yeah, that looks very fair. Yeah, so Dylan's going to need a four, two times. a seven, an eight, or a nine. I think this is very standard. Take the lead here. I don't know if that's standard. I can call two. I would think my, my bet would might be on call. Hmm? What do you have? You have um, any uh, nine. You have nine plus four outs. Minus one, right? No. I have four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe. I don't know. No, you have uh, minus one, yeah. Nine. Dylan cannot hit a ten. Four, right? Minus one. Nine and counting. You have every um, seven. You have every seven, eight, nine. Ten and four. That's oh, sorry, seven, eight, nine, and four. Excuse me. Yep, seven, minus eight, nine, nine, and four. But yeah, yeah. 13 outs. No, minus one. No, two times. No, it's, you have 12 outs. So I have a 9. Oh, yeah, you're right. There's one for Dylan. Always good to win the first one. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to call or raise the turn. Close. Your bet's good. Know. Your bet's good. Second river. I'll take it, man. Deuce, and they're going to chop it. that. Chop it up. One up. Interesting hand. Drew in chat says, I like how they discuss the hands with each other. Yeah, that, I did not totally expect that, but I guess that's what happens when you have two friends who are also very studied players who are very open with their strategy. So I, if you're interested in learning PLO strategy, especially heads up, I think today's a good day to be tuning into the Lodge Live. These guys are going to be open books. And if you're just here to watch the action, you're going to get a lot of that too. So win-win. It's a different conversation than what good friends Doug, yeah. Polk, and yeah, really Bill like Perkins that. had when they were heads up. They did not talk as much strategy, but they did talk about a lot of other things. Indeed, including changing the bets in the middle of a hand. Exactly. Patience is a virtue. I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. What should I do? Pick a different frequency to ask. Like, like wait another 15 minutes when it should have been five? I think that that's the hard part. What it should have mean. Like if they're already busy, they're trying their best, right? I don't know. I don't know. That's why I asked. I waited 15 minutes when I thought it was going to be like three minutes.
Jungle Man trying to track down one of the masseuses here at the Lodge. The challenge is, Lodge is currently packed. Can I have two um, waters, please? Which is a uh, good yeah. thing for the Lodge. Bad thing for trying to get a massage today. Okay. Sorry about that. Trips here for Dylan. Jungle was looking for a, a diamond there. I think your hand's not very good, but I'll fold. Shouldn't you call? You think my hand's bad? I couldn't call. I saw a picture. You could have raised. I could have raised. I had a pretty bad hand to raise with. <laughs> Greyhound, our good friend. The Super Chat says, for the right price, I'll take a bus down there and give Jungle that massage. Good old Greyhound. Went, came down for one week, played on the live stream, won about 10 grand, then proceeded to win a big time tournament. here at the lodge, then went back on the bus. Dylan dead to two outs here. Jungle Man boats up. Seven's full. And now you can throw that away. Okay. Folks with 1,800 watching, if so you haven't you yet to subscribe. My question with the, with the tonk. When, when do you leave? In about 12 hours. Okay. You're not playing any of the high, like the high roller tournaments? I didn't know about them. Mm -hmm. I might have changed my uh, destination if so. Where are you going after this? Um, I'm going to um, LA. Okay. Wise as your last name suggests. <laughs> Are you a wise man? Um, depends on the context. Are you a wise guy? Not as much of a wise guy. I think you're kind of a wise guy. Thank you. Ish? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I said ish. I'm not well, sure. One thing I've been really playing a lot with lately, and I, and I realized a lot of things can be interpreted this way is the whole like saying things and not where people aren't sure oh, yeah. if it's like a good thing or they're not really sure what I'm saying like a double and a lot of double entendres and stuff but I wrote a tweet about how like it from a certain perspective the universe can, can work that way explain well if there's like multiple um, stories or explanations where in many um, many religions they say something like 
they say something similar to what you see is based off of the thoughts that you you feel and that's what you are. I mean, it's the same thing as the thoughts uh, create who you are. It's, it's the same thing as like how projection works, right? People project based on what they understand from what, what they are on the inside. That's what projection is. They see all the bad shit or the good shit if they're bad on the inside. How the fuck can they see the good shit if they're always thinking bad shit all the time or vice versa? So it tells you a little secret about who they are, but so you can say things mm -hmm. that can have double meanings depending, or one meaning, a meaning that people can see depending on what they look at, how they look at. It's like an optical illusion. Sure. And that's, um, it talks about this a bit in um, various religions or various stories. Like there was a monk that studied for, um, Those players were Bradley. Bradley here. That, uh, studied for, um, or uh, did various uh, asanas or you know, sadhanas or whatever in order to to, to uh, see the Maitreya, the future Buddha. And I was straight. Me too. Chop it up. So he, he did all these asanas, the sadhanas, these practices to see the future Buddha. And one day he comes across a rotting dog. And he decides to like basically disgust himself to help this rotting dog by like taking out the maggots from the dog's body with his tongue, mm -hmm. which doesn't end up happening. But instead, uh, the Maitreya appears, and he's like, what the fuck? And the Maitreya's like, I was with you the whole time. You just couldn't see me because of your karma. And then they went in the city with the Maitreya, and the Maitreya, uh, no one could see the Maitreya at all. And one lady could see a rotting dog because of her karma. So that's one of the stories. But a better example is um, I was reading about this practice of dog zen. And they have the first step towards enlightenment, which they call the view, which is the true view of reality. And they say you need to like be taught to see the view in order to see how things really are. And if you do enough introspection or whatever it is, you can see that there's actually quite a few biases that rule uh, the way you look at things. Does that make sense? Yeah. What about you, chat? You think it makes sense? It's a projection. I mean, I think projection is easier to understand what happens, right? Yeah. It's just someone understands themselves, and they're always thinking about themselves. Yep. And so they see the things of themselves, and so. Jack six. I beat that. I mean, I keep throwing my like intuitions to throw it in this direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's the cumulative winnings. It's always happening anyway, all the time. But you can create statements that, or images with art, that can uh, be more suggestive. You could say it's a different version of communication. More of an, an intuitive communication. Yeah, you can say that. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. It occurred to me that a certain version of that was happening to me. And I didn't know what to think of it. Okay. That's what I thought, um, that's what I thought things like synchronicities are. In actuality, is a certain way of looking at things. No worries. And that would be the domain of something that wouldn't, would no longer be very analyzable by logic. If that makes sense. Yeah. It would only, it would be, but only to a certain extent. It couldn't fully be grasped by logic. 
Love the poll. Check out that poll. Jungle Man philosopher. The domain of like art for Two me. answers. Yes, he's a modern day Socrates. Or no, he's a farmer. I guess technically it could be both. So I started actively speaking a little bit in them. Cool. Who showed you this 200 on? What is this is 200. Isn't that right? No, you got, you've been getting it wrong all day. Mm. Fuck. <laughs> What a big range event here. <laughs> Brendan in the chat just asked, what was the starting stack? I think Dylan was in for 15,000 to start. Yes. Jungle Man was in for 20, but he's since added 10. So they're, they're about even right now. Every six to eight hands will do a cumulative winnings total for y'all. Take a jungle. Thought you were supposed to be a simple farmer. Well, when you're out on the farm, you think about lots of things. You know? <laughs> I am a farmer. I am a farmer. I, I, I uh, spread lots of seeds. I wait for them to grow. <laughs> okay. I, I wait for them to grow. I, uh, you know, I plant them badly sometimes. Some get. Swooped up by the rain or whatever it is, and some, uh, you know, the ones that do grow, I put back in the soil. And I put all, I, I try new crops. It's all true. All of that's true. By the way, why nope. didn't you? How long did you have the hay in your mouth last night? Huh? Like, did you come with a stick of hay in your mouth yesterday? Oh shit, that's my problem. Where's my hay? <laughs> On the back, back shelf near the fireplace. All of it's true. Don't know if y'all noticed, by the way, during that last hand. Dylan made the very first button fold of the match, and Jungle was waiting with aces. So, well timed fold from Dylan there. Did you There's the hay. Huh? Where did you find that? So they, they found it for me. Brandy did? Came from the farm. <laughs> Brandy's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's a funny story. I told Brandy to find, like, some tacky outfits to make me look like a douchebag. And, uh, um, <laughs> she probably was really good at that. <laughs> well, what happened was, um, well, I tried, to, I tried a new look to make me look like a douchebag, right? I was like, oh, you got to flick back your hair. You got to get these glasses. And you got to get these tacky shirts. And I'm looking at these shirts and thinking, you know what? I kind of like these shirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then, then someone it's a, tells it's me, a win-win then, right? <laughs> like, and someone tells me, oh, this slick back look, look looks great on you. <laughs> Where it, I'm like, uh-oh, what's going on right now? Makes sense. I'm like, shit, am I a douchebag? <laughs> Only sometimes. Am and I? I? And so, it depends on the context. I can be a little bit of a douchebag sometimes. Yeah, that's what I just said. It's okay to be a what am I doing? Two pair versus a pair and a straight draw on the turn here. Two pair holds up. Does Dylan want to bluff like, with this hand? As a boss or something? Yes, and other times. But win. Well, you gotta say now. <laughs> Do you want me to? I'm curious. Uh, we can have this conversation later, Pot. Uh -huh. It seems like a great time to have it. Okay. He does go for it. Pot's the river. I'm gonna wait till this hand's over because it might make you emotional. So let's finish this first. Yeah, I don't know what you refer to. Well, the good news is the douchebag is in trouble here. So they were rooting an anti douchebag. Might be happy. Pump fake there. What about Dr. Douchebag? I could be Dr. Douchebag and it could be... That's an awful name. <laughs> I don't want Dr. Douchebag. Yeah, yeah. I kind of want it. You want it for me? No. Not if you don't want it. Yeah, I don't want it for me. I try too hard in life. Yeah, I don't know. Lays it down. Dylan gets think, it through. Uh, with women, sometimes you can be. What? 
Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what when you're referring to. Um, just I think communication stuff, not on purpose. Like I don't think it's in your. Um... When are you referring to? Because I've used the c word sometimes. Yes. I mean, is that not a valid context? Dude, like I just can't breathe. You a I you asked the question. <laughs> I mean, you're not incorrect. It's just that's that's not. You're, I mean, you're technically correct, but I don't I don't know if I can think of the right analogy. Of a filling right now, it's like being the grammar police, kind of. I, that I disagree with. Yeah. I don't think that's a grammar. I, I can't. I can't follow the like politically correct trends 100% of the time. That's. I mean, that's not a PC thing. That's a like. And uh, I mean, thing. check. I just find it really hard to like. As much as I can like sympathize with like injustices, they definitely exist. Because I just feel like. Well. There's certainly terrorism on the other side, to be fair. That's like, nah, I have to think of the right analogy. Check. It's sort of like, it's sort of like picking at someone's like, like pre-flop game okay. as a poker player, when it's like, like three percent off, something like that. I don't think three percent is the right one to attribute for that one. I agree with what you're saying in some contexts, but there's different tolerance levels. Listen, man, in America, I feel I feel empathy for women in all the parts of the world, but not really in America. If I'm really honest. I know. And that's that's I think. I feel I feel it when you know the guy shows up and he says he's transgender and wins a tournament. I think that's terrible. At the, in this spot, you know, just at some point, there's got to be a line where let's, let's be adults. It, and yes, I'll, I'll stop. I, I'll the turn us to stop saying the word, but it's not like something that it's not like something that should be like a thing, or that I'm that I've done intentionally. This is this is the kind of thing that makes me not want to try. Actually, if I'm I, really honest. I hear you, but uh, I, I think I, that that's, no, I don't think I'm heard. You don't think you're heard? No. Okay. How how can I hear you better? My point stands. It's just a uh, because yeah. How can I make you feel more heard? I don't think this is a spot for it. I just said that earlier. <laughs> well, I think it all is communicated by the fact that it's like the one situation in history where like finally the pendulum's on the other side, and it's like let's just knock it even further. Deep chats happening here, but in the meantime, we got a poker game still going. It's like one of these things. You guys are around to even. Contain the extremism. Let's put it that way. Or it's like getting too exhausting. Straight for Dylan. It's very similar to me, like accidentally insulting the one person on Twitter. That's how I feel about it. Or I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to like. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Or it gets so exhausting that it's like, come on. Yeah, I don't know. Straight. It's it's not something that's worth attention. Let's look, let's put it that way. It doesn't bring you. It doesn't bring you. Um, it doesn't bring anyone any benefit to bring it to attention. That I disagree with. I mean, I speak. What I say. What I say is simply. As factually as I can say it, like it should just be admonished, and then should take my adjustment seriously, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. And other than that, it, it should require zero attention. I think the hard part is you can't just admonish it, like abolish it. It doesn't just go away when something is so deeply ingrained. So it takes time, effort, energy, all that jazz. You realize this thing has like existed since like last year, and like I'm not on top of cultural trends, nor is it my job to be on top of cultural trends that might offend people. Until someone says something, it's it's Check. it's not my job to to, pay, to know to look for a flag at the side of someone's profile. This is like the point where I just like stop trying because it's just completely insane. Let's pick a different conversation topic. This is making your your juju bad. I don't want, I don't want you to be tilted outside of the poker game. It's like I'm trying to fucking give my money away to help people. 600. 
But I can't, I can't do it because people screw me over and they want to make me the villain because I can say a word like once in a blue moon that might offend someone and it's just not something that matters. But now I'm a douchebag. Okay. Be it that way. I don't, I don't I can, know. You know, you turn off a significant portion of the population by attacking them for things like this. Was I attacking you? It feels like an attack, yes. Okay, I'm sorry that you felt that way. You asked a question. I didn't feel as if my answer, I didn't feel as if the answer let's, be, let's put it like this. I don't feel that you. Jungle, you keep cutting me off. I bet. Okay, sure. Thank you. Um, first off, was it meant as an attack? You asked a question. I created a context that I thought that, all right, I pulled up a situation where I felt that. I understand what you're saying as well. I think your emotions are valid. I also think that because you're so emotional about it, it can make you feel more polarized on the issue. And where something's a 3% spot, maybe it's a 10% spot. And that's where you need to calibrate. And that's, that's what I'm saying. I've already adjusted. I know. I've adjusted so much that it's no longer an issue for a long time. Yeah, no. You said you use this context. And so I'm picking, when you say 3% here. Well, it's like a non-existent percent now because it doesn't even exist. Yeah, because you did a good job. The, it, the, to be fair, I don't think that you're actually attacking me. Thank you. It's just, it's just it just seems crazy to me that it's even like a thing because it really isn't. And it's like one of those things where it's like we're missing the bigger picture. Play the hand. Up one side is going like this, 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 this. And it's like we're missing all that and we're focusing on this little thing over here. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. So, so what you've done is in like instigate my feeling for this whole trend that's like being missed, the whole elephant in the room. And I'm just like, just like, I'm not equipped to deal with it, I guess. Let's talk about this at a different time. I want to continue having this conversation. But okay. 40 hands in, you see the cumulative right. winnings. After this hand, we're going to hear from our title sponsor, like. WPT Global. Like, is this game fun for you? Um. It's some fun. I like mixed games more. I've been learning mixed. Mix is so fun. Mix is, mix is a lot of fun. It's just like a little bit impractical. It's hard. It looks like some people are doing some versions of, of mixed games that are like transcending just like things that are that close to yeah. what's that close to each other. Yeah. I played some stupid games recently like Archie. That game's awful. All right, we're going to hear from our title sponsor, WPT Global. Well, it gets to the point. WPT Global is your destination for big Sunday tournaments. You'll find tournament buy-ins at all levels and huge guarantees. Head over to WPTGlobal.com and use bonus code LODGE. And your first $110 Sunday Slam ticket is free. I think it's my favorite limit game. Oh. It's my favorite too. Yeah, it's so fun. That and uh, Jesus 7 Triple Draw are the ones that I've learned recently that I've really enjoyed. One idea that I had was to, um, you know, you can, you can parameterize all these games by what made them popular in the first place. I bet. I, bet. <laughs> can I, check? I mean, it, it could be theoretically possible oh, to create new games of sorts if you understood the parameters that made certain games successful. Totally. But it's, it's just hard. B making games in general is really fucking hard. To make, like, thinking about a bit, like, think balance, for example, in a game is really challenging to create. Balance? Yeah, like, um, balance towards itself when it's just one person, when you just rotate the. Well, I'm more saying, like, in some games, an ace is too powerful. Oh, Therefore, yeah. Therefore, the entire game revolves around an ace. Well, that happens more when there's, like, a lot of different cards. Yeah. I mean, like, a big. Like having too many cards can be quite of an issue. That's because it's more complicated. It makes it harder to balance. The, the more complicated a system is, the harder it is to balance. Check. Yeah. Check it. Check. Conversation topic has thankfully shifted. Yes. 600 in the middle here. 
Check, check on the turn. Dylan's got a king. Both hands here kind of have some showdown value. Dylan's going to go for a little value. Well, you're pretty soon. Well, incorrectly, I just realized how I'm supposed to handle it. I'm sure I didn't handle it right. Yeah, it's something that makes you feel emotional, so it's harder to be GTO about it. GTO is to say something like, that's really important, but... And. That's really important, and. 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 Yeah, 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 that's better. Yep. I don't know, I guess. Should we eat my hay? Mike, we have a ton of stuff okay, coming down the pike this it, week. A lot of tournament yet. action oh, on the Lodge right. live stream. I, I'm to We're going to have the main we're event final good. table. We're going to have the Bill Perkins $50,000 KISS Invitational. Like, yeah, I don't know what we'll call it, but that's coming on Monday the 15th, the day after Mother's Day. We won't be streaming next Sunday. We're going to take Mother's Day off. From my perspective, like, but if you like tournament streams, next week it's going to be a lot of tournament things. streams. Yes, that is exactly the right way. Something like that. You're excited about next week. That we're going to have a lot of really, really great players in town. Emotions. You just can't discount the And we're going to get to watch them play yeah, poker yeah, that's the, the under the lights here in this rational. great like poker studio. Is rational, actually. Mm -hmm. But, like, a lot, uh, you know, to be honest, that side that would use that criticism a lot would also use a lot of irrational criticism, which I find very difficult to handle. Yeah. Right. So you have a logic brain. Shouldn't I have a logic brain? Um, some people don't have logic brains. Some people have emotional brains or intuitive brains. That's, that's too much. <laughs> more than you're allowed to bet. To be fair, that is a spot you'd want to bet more than the pot. So, <laughs> like, you, like, If you were going to pick a sizing, that's the right sizing. You can pick like, like 1.5x. Oh. How long have we been playing? Do we know? What's an intuitive brain, doctor? Um, I met someone recently, excuse me, hour and a half, thank you. I had a conversation with someone recently who, um, it was a really, really fun conversation where uh, she, when she is thinking in her brain, does not say words to herself. What? It's all just like intuitive feeling and emotion. I mean, so, I guess that could make sense. Yeah. Because it's just a different medium of communication. Yeah, but like when she's talking to herself, she does not have an inner dialogue. It's just like feelings and emotions and like ideas. That could, yeah, I guess that could be true. Yeah. Like it could be even in colors. Why not? Check it. That's one of my the bit one part of my big revelation, by the way, is that the nature of communication <laughs> can be looked at in many different ways. That's part of what I'm saying through my double entendres is that. It's not just in the words that you communicate. Yeah. And you can communicate multiple different things. Like you can, a very simple example is you can communicate, communicate by saying something and say it in a... In check. It's your turn. Yeah, check. <laughs> I mean, that's one obvious example, but like it's not exactly this double entendre yeah. where your words can be interpreted in multiple different check. ways. That's the double entendre. Okay. Jungle picks up a straight draw on the turn here. Dylan with top pair in this three bet pot. Check, check on the flop. Now Jungle's going to come with a pot size bet, 1800, really leveraging that seven he has. Blocking the straights, of course, that seven is. Now Dylan's in kind of a sticky spot. He does call, though. Even if he's behind against a hand like two pair, he has a lot of outs against it. But if he's up against a straight, he is not looking great. Though we did have a wrap as well. Yeah. For some reason, I didn't see that. Check, check, on, check on the river. Now Jungle decides to check back. Wow. I guess for whatever reason, Jungle does not like bluffing with that specific combo of Queen Jack 7 2. Obviously, he had yeah. absolutely no showdown value. So he was waving the white flag. I wasn't yeah, actually, it was reasonable, I guess. I wasn't calling it. That's something. Something weird and interesting that happens in PLO. Sometimes you get to the river with absolutely nothing, and you have no chance of winning, but you shouldn't bet either because you have a lot of other hands in your range that are nothing as well, and you can't just bluff with all of them. You might be bluffing too often. As we get a look at the room, that's the day two of the $800 buy-in, 500k guaranteed tournament, which cleared $700,000 in the prize pool. It's going to be 111000 going to first. Lodge like cam there. Yep. Couple tournaments going That's on in the foreground. Like Cash games in the background. We had 
28 cash tables yesterday. Like he would, um... Incredible stuff here at the lodge. He would, like, answer my questions that I asked at one point. He would, like, answer them different ways. He would answer them later on in another session and things like that. It was, it was just very strange. It would just be, like, the wording that he used and things like this. Dylan with another wrap. Five, six, nine. nine, ten, or Jack would give Dylan okay. a straight. You're doing great. <laughs> Jungle's got the pair of sevens and an open ender. Plus a five wouldn't be such a bad card, or at least he would think that. Of course, it would give Dylan a straight. Turn ace, jungle picks up a flush draw as well. It'll be interesting to see how this turn action goes. I could really see it going any direction. Dylan could bet, Dylan could check. Against a bet, jungle could check raise. He might just check that call. Does go check check. Nine on the river. Dylan has a straight. So does jungle. One of the dirtier rivers that could have come here. Bet out there. Three. Me too. I have six, five. Ten, six. Of course you do. It was, I had a good hand. I had a full wrap. Two backdoor flush draws. That's a dealer change on hand number 54, probably in, an, in another eight hands or so. We're going to have a, a brief 10 minute break during the dealer change. It is starting to get colder again. Yeah, yeah. It is. is there any update with the masseuses? It's a little bit longer than. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Killed that one. How so? Uh, the other times you didn't say thank you. Oh. <laughs> that, by the way, is um, a social. Uh, that's a, that's a social thing. It's not really. Totally, a, thing. totally a social thing, and totally makes people feel good. So, so even if it's a social thing, it makes them feel good. What I mean is, it's a um, it's a cultural thing. It is a cultural it's thing. It's not really like a thing in other places in the world. Completely hear you, and in this culture it matters, and so you should do it in this culture. That's but why I do it in this culture. Yeah, you're right. But you were saying it as if it was like a counter-argument. No, 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 I'm just saying, I just want to point it out because it's actually not the norm. No, it, I, yeah, in some places it's not. I completely agree. Here like, it is. Like India, it's, I don't think, I'm not sure if it's the norm in India or not actually, but it's the norm in first world. But that's what people don't realize, is many of the things that people actually do are all just memes, social memes. Memes. 600. Is that what the word is? <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> like, so is how are you. How are you is like a bigger one for sure. Mm -hmm. Go man with the check mark with two pair. 600. Yeah, it looks like he's bluffing. Every time. It looks like he's bluffing. It looks like he's up to something. It's good to read. Nice hand. That's the best you'd wash your calls all day. 
I have to just put you in more spots and the cameras will always get it right. Folks, if you want to play on the Lodge live stream, a couple ways to do it. Go to the lodgepokerclub.com slash live stream, fill out the questionnaire, or contact Skull Mike directly on his Instagram or Twitter <laughs> at Skull Mike Poker. We're kind of filled up like this brutal. week, but starting in the next week or two, there's a good chance we could get you on yeah. if you're coming through town. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Get in touch with Skull Mike. Call. They were trying something a little different for the first time ever. A heads up PLO stream between two good friends, Dylan Weissman and Jungle Man. Better than my hand. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I had nine, nine high with three spades. I'm proud of you. Good job. Nice hand. King Jack. Good bluff. You had, you had the King of Spades, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what are you a doctor of? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> That's one of the things that people get. The, I've gotten so many. Um, it's like hate messages, like, you don't even have a doctorate. <laughs> um, Joey, um, Joe Ingram, when I used to go on his podcast, he would just call me the good doctor. Like the good doctor? Dr. GTO. Yeah. And so, Dr. Good. Yeah. And so I just, Dr. Um, Wiseman. so I just co-opted it because he already built that brand for me. But I've had at, at, at least a dozen messages over my life, like, hey, what do you, like, do you even have a doctorate? <laughs> the answer is no. How does that work? Good question. I, I'm not the right person to ask that to. <laughs> it, it, it's like, I think that in the same way that you and I would describe intuition, um, you just have an emotion and everything you say is built off around that? I don't know if that's the right way to describe it. I'm gonna lose this one. What is it? King, King Deuce is the winner. Yeah, I'm gonna lose this. I, I, I that seems like a check raiser to me. I'm happy I didn't bet. I mean, I have noticed certain um, patterns with emotional people, though. That's a very logical thing for you to say. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, I noticed patterns with myself also. You have, your brain probably notices more patterns than almost every other brain on the planet Earth. So, Why do you say that? Because that's literally how you perceive the world, is through patterns. Been a little light on the action over the last 30 minutes. That tends to happen in Pot Limit Omaha. Huh? I was saying they've been killing it. The right way to play Pot Limit Omaha from a theoretical perspective yeah. has a lot of defensive and passive play to protect the rest of your range because you have so many different hands in your range. So it's kind of like trains whizzing by each other regularly and then once in a while they crash. And that's when you see a big three, four bet pot or a big check raise pot, stuff like that. So it's kind of kind of like we're just sitting here waiting for something crazy to happen. This will be fun to review later. Huh? So this will be fun to review later. Okay. Yeah, Matt's watching it. I'm taking notes. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that might be helpful. 
Sounds to me like these guys are going to discuss the session afterwards. Yeah, folks, we got a lot of comments. Uh, they are friends, guys, so yes, they talk a lot. And uh, first one, I was doing so good. Yeah. Try to have they're good buddies. Sure. Nice spot for Dylan here. Got a wrap. And the King of Hearts isn't a bad card to have either. That was a good plot for me. A farmer could be introspective. Oh, totally. Totally. What else are they going to do? Play Once again, at hand number 54, we're going to have a dealer's swap. We're going to get two Maybe new dealers in. And wave goodbye to farmer. Anastasia and <laughs> Anthony. The two dealer what? format gets a lot of hands in. I just love when you use accents. My favorite. <laughs> like you try so hard, and I love it. It's genuine. It's my favorite. Jungle Man raising it up with the quad suit, Queen Knight five two. Check. Tough hand to flop anything with, but he does have a gutter. Rather watch them play crazy pineapple, yeah. someone says in the chat. I don't disagree. It sounds fun. They almost played that the other night on stream. Oh, and there's the six for jungle. Right, Two pair for Dylan. Accent style. Talking all deep and funky. You don't expect someone this thick of an accent to give out some deep thoughts. There ain't been so many deep philosophers quotes. If we weren't playing poker, like this, this could be a mental thing because that's really hard for me to think when you're doing this. I mean, maybe I should be doing this more often then. Maybe it's a good strategy. It might be. I, I want you to. <laughs> I really do. Four hundred, huh? From a city slicker like me. These are trying to plant the seeds. Or he's waiting. Doesn't want to be uprooted. Jungle Man mulling over a raise, and it looks like he's going to go for it. This is a bet call, so. Eat that. Dylan quickly calls. That wins. I had the perfect, oh yeah. Bad river. Oh no. How much, 16? Can't fold that one to the jungle. Ace king, 8 6. Synchronium asks, does Button open a higher percentage of hands in heads-up PLO or heads-up no limit hold'em? In heads-up no limit hold'em, you're going to raise more hands, if that's what you mean by open. But I believe the Pot Limit Omaha heads-up strategy has a lot more limping in it. So I think you end up playing about the same number of hands, maybe a little bit more in PLO because you have that limping strategy. Sure. But... In Nolan and Hold'em, you're mainly playing a raise-only strategy, so it's naturally a little tighter. So it's kind of a weird comparison. And it's so a small one. But I'm pretty sure we're going to see very, very few okay. <laughs> folds on the button today. We did see one fold earlier from Dylan. He had Ace-9-3-2 Rainbow. So I guess that's a folding hand. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. As we see the cumulative winnings before these players go off to a quick break. Yeah, there's the cumulative winnings. We're going to have about a 10-minute break. We're going to talk about some different things, what's going on at the lodge. But let's start off this little intermission with a word from our sponsor today, WPT Global. WPT Global is your destination for big Sunday tournaments. You'll find tournament buy-ins at all levels and huge guarantees. Head over to WPTGlobal.com and use bonus code LODGE. And your first $110 Sunday Slam ticket is free.
Come play on WPT Global, the real money online poker home of the WPT. As a first-time depositor, uh, you can get a free $110 Sunday Slam tourney ticket and a matching deposit bonus of up to $1,200. Visit WPTGlobal.com slash landing slash lodge and use code lodge. So we're 54 in hands in, Mike, and uh, your thoughts on the early action hasn't been too, too many, as you call them, train wrecks, but we're waiting for one. Yeah, I mean, we had that one four-bet pot uh, where I think it was uh, Dylan raised the button, jungle three-bet, and then Dylan put in the four-bet, um, and then the pot ended up not being too, too huge. And then we had that one really potential six spot where it came king three three in a three bet pot dylan had ace three with no other relevant cards so trips with an ace kicker and jungle had the kings full pocket kings on king three three jungle bet the flop uh dylan raised on the button jungle just called and then on the turn jungle just checked and called again and then dylan found a really really well-timed check back on the river so that could have easily been Dylan getting stacked if the hand was played differently. But it ended up just being a $5,400 pot. And then the one all-in we saw was Dylan check-raising all-in on the turn with a wrap and a pair and jungle calling with top two pair and a low gut shot straight draw. They ran it twice and they chopped it up. So overall, just not too much blood. And as I was saying a few minutes ago, that, that's just how PLO goes sometimes. It, it, you have to play a defensive strategy in a lot of situations. And when you play defensive strategies, that leads to a lot of, you know, flop checking, even when you, with a pretty solid hand, you know, turn checking or just calling with a pretty solid hand. So it kind of keeps the pots small in some situations that you might not expect them to, say, to stay small. What it's really going to come down to is, is there going to be a big pre-flop matchup, you know, a pocket Kings with an ace, versus pocket aces where they get a bunch of money in pre-flop or is one player going to, you know, go for a four bet bluff or a five bet bluff when the other player has aces, something like that could always happen. Or both players are going to really smack a flop. Both have a really robust hand with some sort of set or straight or two pair with backup outs. And that's when a bunch of money is really, really going to go in. And then of course, kind of the most entertaining one, in my opinion, I don't know if the viewers will agree is when a guy has the right blockers to bluff and he decides I'm going to take it to the streets. I'm going to check raise or bet or whatever the situation is and go crazy. Try to get this guy to make a big fold. And then the other guy may or may not have it. So that's kind of what we're waiting for. One of those, as you just called them and I called them earlier train wrecks to happen Yeah, in great, the great game of PLO. Great way to describe it. You know, PLO heads up something different. We don't see it often or at all and we took you know we're going to take chances like this here at the lodge live stream going to bring you uh different content from time to time our bread and butter obviously no limit hold'em ring games and we love to have those we had one last night that lasted about 11 hours with doug and terrace and jungle man and crew uh doug's done some heads up no limit hold'em that were highly entertaining so we're going to continue bringing you different content and you know, some, so it may be uh, something for you, and it may not be, but uh, we're going to continue trying to try different things. Let's tell, talk a little bit about what's going on here at the Lodge. We are smack dab in the middle of the second annual Lodge Championship Series. Uh, still plenty of time to get here. We've got some um, high roller events uh, on, the, on the horizon uh, coming up this week, and also the main event, the $3,000 buy-in, $2 million guarantee. Last year, Mr. Visine Man right there, Alan Bauer, took home $374,800, uh, and he made that hand that we thought was one of our best hands ever when he bluffed ace-king all in against the pocket aces and he got the aces to fold after the flop. Uh, Alan Bauer, uh, hopefully he'll be back Doug Polk finished fourth in that event, so uh, Doug is looking forward to that main event and uh, the high roller events. Also, a lot of folks are looking forward to that. First time the Lodge has ever had uh, tournaments uh, as high as $25,000 buy-in, so we're looking forward to seeing how that all works out as well. Yeah, I'm really curious how many people show up for the high roller series, and in particular the 25K. Uh, do you have any 
guesses, Rick? If, if you had to guess the final field size of the 25K, the, what you think it's going to be? In the 25K, I'm, I'm hoping it hits 20. I, I'm, I'm saying between 15 and 20. If it goes over that, I mean, unreal. But I, I think the 25K is – it's our first time we've ever done something like this. Uh, so the Lodge Championship Series is going on right now. What do you think before I, I go to, to the guess, next thing? Yeah, I – I mean, I just to one up that. By the way, I think it's the first time there's ever been a 25k buy-in in, in Texas. Yes. So not e not even just in the lodge, just in Texas. So this is a really really uncharted territories. That said, I mean, I've seen a few people of the names that are coming into town. I don't want to say publicly in case they haven't said publicly that they're coming out. Um, but you know, based on the names I've seen and the the handful, you know, it's like five or six different people that are kind of confirmed coming out for the 25k. I could easily see it being 25, 30 players. Nice. And, you know, with a re-entry or two, you know, maybe we're at 35, which would be amazing. I mean, that right there is what a, an 800K prize pool approximately. So it's just so cool that such a small field can, you know, generate such a huge prize pool. And we're going to be streaming that tournament and it's going to be awesome. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some real, real top tournament players in there. So if you are someone who, you know, likes watching those guys play, I mean, there's a bunch of streams all over the world. You know, Triton is a great one where really, really high stakes tournaments are happening, really high level play. That's going to be coming to Poker at the Lodge next week. So I'm really excited to see how that goes. It should be awesome. Yeah, so we got the Lodge Championship Series. And then we announced yesterday, Anthony Chester, the great tournament director from the Lodge, came in. We talked about something on the horizon called the Mega Monster. It is going to be a $1 million guarantee, $400 buy-in with a guarantee up top, guarantee first place money of 250 k at least for on a $400 buy-in. The Mega Monster, look for that August 3rd through the 14th. It's going to be crazy. I think there's 24 day one flights, and then they're going to go to town. That is an absolute amazing value. Imagine buying in once in that tournament for $400 and walking out with 250 k plus. What do you think about that, Mike Brady? It's just incredible. And honestly, we might even be aiming a little low with that guarantee. I could easily see this thing doing 1.5 million prize oh, pool. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's 24 starting flights. Yeah. We're doing two starting flights a day, Sunday through Thursday. And then we're also doing three starting flights a day on Friday and Saturday. So, and, and that's going to be happening, I believe it's August 3rd through the 12th are when all the day ones are running. Yeah. So if you are in Texas or want to come into town in that time period, August 3rd through 14th, the Mega Monster is going to be running. I suspect it's going to be a lot like a series in the room. It's going to be yeah. popping. There's going to be a lot of cash games. But instead of a series, it's just one tournament that's running for as long as the series would. And, you know, I, I, if I had to predict, and, you know, don't hold my feet to the fire if I'm wrong here, but I could see the winner actually pulling home 300, 350, maybe even 400K from this tournament. And that's for a $400 buy-in. We're seriously putting up World Series of Poker level numbers at the Lodge these days. And I'm super excited to see how that one goes. As you see, the players are getting ready to be situated. It looks like Anastasia will remain as one of the dealers. We're going to bring in Miranda. But yeah, you know, the, there's a sweet spot. You know, you, you see some of these tournaments. We just had a, a uh, tournament, uh, a 300,000 guarantee tournament that was a $400 buy-in. And it it went uh, over 750000 um in the prize pool, so more than double. There's a sweet spot of a tournament number that gets so many people involved, and it, it, that's I'm looking so much forward to that August Mega Monster. Are you going to be playing it, Rick? Of course. There I you mean, go. I, I, I mean, come on, Iron Mike Brady. That's, that's for me. That's, I may not be able to pull the trigger on the 25K. <laughs> High roller, but, <laughs> uh, but I can pull the trigger on the $400 event. Looks like the players are getting ready. Jungle Man finally was able to corral a masseuse. He's filling out that pa paperwork. And uh, so lots of things going on in the Lodge. And Mike, the thing that I noticed with all the series, the Mayhem series, the Lodge Championship series, is any tournament series brings in also tons of cash players it's crazy how many cash games we've got going along during these tournament series yeah i mean it's one of the best parts of you know having these series for both the room and for the local players i mean it brings in new life it injects new blood into the scene for at least some period of time 
Um, and, and that's awesome. So even cash game players, if you don't like tournaments, it's Watch still worth Park making the trip during the series Dr. to get to play in all those um, kind yeah. of juiced up cash games as we return anymore, to the action here. I'm, it's very into cartoons. cartoons Jungle Man finally... Jungle Man finally has I, his masseuse. Yes. And he's got his prolific voice actor. piece of hay in his mouth. So I think maybe the conversation will take a turn for the better. If you were not enjoying it, you are probably not alone. And uh, hopefully it's going to be a little different on this second. After this first intermission, I should say. I thought you were going to like the kids these days because of the cartoons. I thought that one was going. Oh, the kids these days. That's true. Well, that's the first. We just had someone tune out in the chat. They said they're tuning out because of the massage. Unacceptable that Jungle's <laughs> getting a massage. You know, we all have different viewing habits. I'm not going to blame you for it. But I do find that one funny. Oh, Jungle with a nice looking hand. Ace, king, king, queen, ace, queen of clubs. That's going to be a three bet does make it 900 to go. You will notice that all the preflop raise sizes in Potlum and Omaha are pot. It's just kind of how the game is kind of meant to be played at a, at a high level, at least. So when, when the player raises on the button, they're going to pot it, which is $300. When the player in the big blind re-raises, they're going to pot it, which makes it 900. If there's a four bet, you're going to see that four bet to pot, 2,700. And if you see a five bet today, which I hope we do, it's going to be a pot size five bet. Dylan flops an open ender and a pair here. Jungle with just the kings. Yeah. Check, check. Check, check to the river we go. Yeah. The check mark. Jungle Man. But it's Dylan who's going to fire. Jungle. Jungle's going to make the correct call. Yeah, nice call from Jungle there. He had a lot of nice cards to have. Having two kings makes it less likely that Dylan has a straight with King Jack. Having a queen makes it less likely that Dylan has two pair. With that involves a queen and having the king of hearts makes it less likely Dylan has a flush. A lot of nerdy blocker talk in PLO. Because that's just how the game is played, unfortunately, I folks. It really. <laughs> I feel like I need a piece of straw, too. I feel like this is an unfair advantage that you have right now. Man. <laughs> Get past this over here. Sadie Slicker is going to try to pretend. Where did you find this? This is ridiculous. Yeah, it's your turn. No, don't do that. Make good hand. Don't do that. So, Mike, you've got an interesting podcast going on that, that you're doing. Uh, can you let folks know how they can listen to it? Oh, yeah, sure. If you it like, it was on a farm. like improving your poker game, especially if you like listening to podcasts when you do it, I started something called the Upswing Poker Level Up podcast earlier this year. This We've already hit over 200,000 listens and views across all the <laughs> podcast platforms and YouTube. We have video versions out on the Upswing Poker YouTube channel, or you can find it wherever you listen to your podcast. It's called Upswing Poker Level Up. And the whole idea of the show is to help people get better at poker really fast. Every episode is just 15, 20, 30 minutes long at the most. And we are hyper, hyper focused on one specific topic. For example, when to bet big, when to bet small, how to play ace high boards, how to check raise, all these different fundamental things about poker and sometimes a little more advanced things. We cover it in a single episode to make you at least an intermediate level of knowledge in these topics. So go check it out wherever you get your podcast or on YouTube. Upswing poker level up. Fantastic. 
Listen to that on my walk every morning. You already do, or you're going to? I'm going to. Be impressed. Nice. Hopefully Starting tomorrow. It. Definitely check out the episode about live cash games, Rick. You will love that one. I just recently got the MO4. That was fantastic. Good job. Good question. What do you want to do? Chip values, the pink ones, we call them bubble gum, they're 5,000. The yellow ones are 1,000. Black chips, 100. Purple chips, 500. Green chips, 25. We're playing high stakes poker, Dan. I can't take this show seriously. You know what, if you got a tractor, I think that that would be, <laughs> be unique. Huh? You want to differentiate yourself in the dating pool, a tractor is going to do it. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to show them the farm. You see the cumulative winnings? <laughs> I, could see you, I could see you having a farm at one point. Why not? A couple horses? It feels like horses. It's nice to see two guys laughing and smiling like that at the table. Absolutely. Check. A lot of middle cards on this flop. Neither player with a straight, though. Both with a pair and a straight draw. Jungle with the more... S or no, they both have the same straight draw. I was about to say only jungle has the open under, but they both have the same open under. Third heart on the turn. Both players with a single heart. Pot size bet from jungle. Gets it done. Hands like that are really nice to bluff with in jungle shoes because he has the 10 of hearts, which makes it less likely Dylan has a flush that involves the 10 of hearts. And he has a bunch of like pair and sort of straight draw blockers too. So it just makes it a lot harder for Dylan to call when you have so much interaction with the board yourself. <laughs> That's all, how a lot of the pot limit Omaha bluffs work. How you kind of decide when to bluff when you have all that board interaction. I don't think a lot of people have rabbit farms. It's not something I thought about. I think I'm teaching you a new trick. Low flush draw for jungle here, but also hit a six for a full house. Ooh, nasty turn. Jungle with the flush, Dylan with top boat. Now jungle's only got a six high flush, so it's not like there's going to be a ton of blood here, but he's going to lose some money. Dylan does go for a pot size bet and gets called. Six would be the disaster card for jungle here. But it's an ace.
Nice fold from jungle. Gets away from the flush. Saves his $3,600. And we're working on Jungle Man's microphone, the masseuse, and the massages. Caused a little challenge there, but we are going to be working on that to make sure we get it fixed for y'all. Could do that. Could have yeah. random king, random queen. Farm will last actually kind of the dream stick by it. Couple nice looking hands battling here. I on a farm for a Both bit. players flop over pairs. You can tell me that. It's it's a small, farm. small farm. Dylan also has the ace of diamonds on this two diamond flop, which makes his hand a little bit more versatile. He's going to be able to bluff turns and rivers at Aura Diamond. And then chickens. Oh, he might not have to as he turns. A pair of aces. There are chickens and then a bunch of crops. Check, check, check on the turn. Jack of diamonds on the river. What kind of chickens? I don't know the answer to that question. Chicks. More than likely going to go check, check here. But maybe Dan decides to bluff at it. He has the king of diamonds, okay. which is a valuable blocker, but he does just check. Ace queen's going to win. I could have easily bet. see it going bet. I mean, if you bet, it would have mattered. Not really. I would have check raised. Exactly. As Dylan was just said, I was about to say, Dylan might have check raised versus a bet Maybe on the river what? from jungle there. <laughs> the that would have been fun to see. Hmm? There's the lodge cam. There's the pit master general. Cam mixing it up poker right there in the middle of the screen. Let's see if we can find Skull Mike out there. He busted a turn, but just re-entered... The six max tournament that we've got going on today. Chickens are scary. Ah, is today the one the one K buy in six max, isn't it? Yes. Situations where like a fox got into our chicken coop, just like killed them all. You let you can't protect the chicks from fox. Foxes are coming. Yeah, you girls hear this? Yeah. No, it it was very sad. Apparently, it's just a thing. If you have chickens, they they just die all the time. We we asked multiple people with chickens and farms, and just like they're just not durable. <laughs> it's farm, farm Boy 101. I thought you'd do that. <laughs> Able to handle things with things like get rowdy? Yeah. What? Am I able to handle things when things get rowdy? It's trouble at the farm. Oh, yeah. Put it that way. Uh, that I can handle. I can handle trouble at the farm. I think I have the right hand to call with here. Might hurt me, though. Dylan's going to make the right call. Two seven, no good. Thought it'd be cool to bluff a two seven. Didn't work. Era nines. But I had the six of diamonds. Just bags with a great comment was watching on his phone while doing yard work. Now he's got it on the one hundred and ten inch projector in the man cave. Uh, yeah, I, see it. I, I don't big hay people like There you go, know. just bags. Little hay works sometimes too, you know? Hmm? Little little piece of hay works just as well as a big piece of hay does. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you you don't only need a small crop to get the the same crop uh, same <laughs> amount of work done. <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need all 400 steer to get the work done. On the farm, you just need a few steer. A few steer will do. True. Better sometimes, you know, a few steer will uh, water the crop. Better than. What's the current state of the Polk 100k heads up challenge? It was just asked in chat. The next match, I believe, is happening in June against Kevin Rabichow. Really, really strong heads up player. In my opinion, it's going to be the best match yet with two very, very, very well studied 
talented and fearless players going at it. I enjoyed the Bill Perkins versus Doug match as much as anyone, but I also like the highest level play possible sometimes, and those two guys are going to bring it. So definitely keep an eye out in June Hello. for the Kevin Rabichow versus Doug Polk 100K heads up match. Should be a good one. Jungle Man see jungle. heads a flush. Yeah, he drags it in. Hopefully you'll be able to join with part of that uh, broadcast in June. You were part of the, the, the group that uh, broadcasted, brought the Doug Polk, Daniel Negreanu heads up match to so many people. Indeed, that was, that was kind of my baby, that stream, to be honest, and my first experience into the, the sort of broadcasting side of poker. If, if anyone didn't watch that, that was back when, as we see Jungle 3 betting with aces here, Dylan's not going to go anywhere with ace-king-10. No, you Back then, it was a, a big heads-up challenge between Daniel and Doug. You'd probably heard of it, 200-400. And they were playing on WSOP.com, which is a weird site that does not even allow you to view it from another state other than Nevada. So I couldn't even open up and watch the game myself from California. And I thought that was just completely unacceptable. So we created that stream over on the Doug channel and the Upswing Twitch channel to broadcast the whole thing. Jungle, great flop here for aces. Dylan's not going to go anywhere yet with ace-king high. It was a oh, week like ago to last Sunday where we saw what may be that, that, uh, the most memorable, memorable hand ever played here on the Lodge live stream when Bill Perkins went all in sure about for that. about 200000 against hands you play, you and play that one weird. shoved and left the building. Proceeded to go to the Austin airport because he had to get to Phoenix by a certain time to see one of his friends was performing. Left during the hand. 30 minutes delay. He was in chat from the Austin airport saying, the suspense is killing me. What happened? Hands ended up folding his pocket tens. It's gone viral since then. If you haven't seen the hand, go watch it. What fun we had a week ago right here. Bill was sitting right where Dylan sitting today. versus aces here. Could see a lot of money go in. Looks like jungle's counting out the re-raise. And he does. Double suited queens versus aces with no suit. Considering he has no suit, I could see Dylan just calling this. That said, he's got jack nine. Those are kind of nice side cards. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's my number now. I meant to call. I took one too many out, but that's the number. 23. Nick and 23. I meant to call, but I picked up one too many jokes. Oh, wow. Dylan did mean to just call with these aces, but he four bet small instead. Claiming misclick. Three's okay with me. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta discount both ways. Jungle's gonna call. Now we're getting one of those four bet pots, albeit by good accident. Good discounts. This makes me uh, good at my job. You gotta be a bit of a bargain hunter. Six, five, deuce. Well. Not much interaction with this with this board for either player. Jungle does have that three. Like Maze sometimes ain't selling too well. Dylan's gonna go for a small bet, a thousand to forty six hundred. These days, uh, beans are hot. King on the turn. Jungle picks up a flush draw now. Season though, that's the that's the problem. Runner, runner, clubs for Jungle Man to hit his flush.
and Dylan gets out of the way. Jungle drags solid size pot, takes the lead again. When you're out on the farm, what's your favorite crop? My favorite crop when I'm out on the farm. Kale. Hmm? Kale. Kale. Why kale? I love kale. What do you love about kale? Kale's great. Kale and spinach? Oh my god. Eat it all day. Dylan does love green things. I once went to Fee's house in Vegas, which is more like a mansion. I actually, I had a Dylan was living there at the time, and could look, could look like the a German roommate, yeah, his name is like Borg, that. he was cooking up some food wanna, in the kitchen, and then Dylan walks in from in, yoga in or wherever he came from, and was like, are you cooking green things? I want some green things. Not even, <laughs> not even a specific thing, just anything green. I think green paint would have been good enough for him. Would be good for you. Too much caffeine. Huh? Too much caffeine. No, no, no. MO4 it takes it to you need a lot of gas for that. Yeah. Different kind of gas. Yeah. That's that tractor shit. Check. No, if you're still thinking of getting that farm and stuff, you think you think you're gonna hit the farm again? I think so. We live in Vegas right now, so. You know, well, if you're going to get back in on the farm stuff, you're going to have to learn vertical farming. That's true. That's the uh, farming of the future. It's going to be hot in a lot of countries. One, two, three. Oh, this. What is this? It's like a tumbleweed. Tumbleweed in the distance. Uh, Ace Queen? Ace Queen. What's this guy doing? What's this guy doing? Then she come in of winnings as you see. Pretty even today. Yeah, not much blood. We've seen some big pots, but nothing huge. Slick Rick along with Mike Brady in the bunker. Gonna go a couple hours today, a couple more hours. Yeah, I'm hoping we can at least see a stacking once or twice, right? I mean, this has kind of been crazy that neither player has, has been felted, yet we did have that one all-in, as we already talked about. Dylan got it in with a wrap against Jungleman's two pair. And they ended up chopping it up. Ran it twice, chopped it up, so no blood. Three-bet call here, Jungleman with a nice little double-suited hand. Dylan with some high-card, middle-card connections. Both players yeah. flopped a flush draw. Yeah, this could get interesting. You're, 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 you're apparently, you got some of my dyslexia. What happened? I think I do. Just take a deep breath. Small bet from jungle gets called. Queen on the turn. Jungle takes the lead with a pair of queens. And he's got the superior flush draw, so he's got Dylan in rough shape here. Dylan does have a gut shot straight draw in addition to that 10 high flush draw, so he could maybe call versus another bet. It's a bigger bet, though. 3,000. A full pot. TMK pointing out that Jungle is wearing the third day in the row this same outfit as Dylan folds and Jungle takes it down. Quick question for you, chat. Do you think your parts? the overalls were washed? Tornadoes. They call they just call tornadoes. tornadoes back in my barn. They're just How many people are in your barn? I got my, my two sisters, my, <gasps> my uh, mom, my dad, cousins, a couple cousins. Sometimes some friends come by. <laughs> Depends on the day. Depends on the day. So, you ever see, do you, do they got tornadoes over there? No, thankfully. That sounds scary. Ah, man. Do they, they got tornadoes, tornadoes over, over there? there. Tornadoes, too. Tornadoes <laughs> don't got to be no nasty storms. Really? Yeah. Jungle Man hits a flush on the flop. It's a tornado that can't be seen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
200. You ever heard of a cute tornado? No. Ooh, strong gust to win. BW Bug is very optimistic, says he has three of the same yeah, outfits. Really trouble's not too bad. It could be a good thing. You get bored. And a diamond draw for Jungle Man makes the bet and takes it down. The flop? Yeah, it looks like a good flop. That looks like a very good flop. I technically had the best hand. Wash your hand. I feel like a dad. Wash your hands. Folks, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, we ask you to do so. 123,000 subscribers and growing. Also, hit that thumbs up. It helps us. It doesn't cost you anything. Helps spread the word about our channel. We're on three We're times a week normally, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 3 p.m. Central. Like staying in character to take extra bandwidth. And ball deep you go. If you're a simple farmer, it's easy, right? Farming life is easy. Far, you think farming's easy? <laughs> I don't think you've been farming for too long. But listen, farming ain't easy. It's not all. It's not all. Uh, you know, it's not all tractors and and uh, horse riding. It's not all about farming. It's way more than that. It's water in the fields every day. It's, it's, um, uh, taking care of the animals. Dylan flops a boat. Dylan As we get some nice insight into farm life from jungle there. Animals sick, you gotta... You gotta do whatever you gotta do to figure out what to do with them. You gotta figure out the sick. It's true. That's the scariest thing. Very scary. Very scary. I have a sick dog. Like my our puppy has epilepsy. It's one of the scariest things. <laughs> Ned Wiseman checks in. <laughs> saying seeing Dylan in a cowboy hat makes me wonder if I failed as a parent. Because it's, it's a defense mechanism. Come on, Dad. He looks good in that black cowboy hat. I think so. Mm -hmm. I don't laugh. I get serious. I, I get serious sometimes, too. But sometimes, I, you know, I just have to, to release.
Bryson asks, why are there two dealers? We found it in our heads-up matches, specifically the Hold'em heads-up matches. And this is the first time we've ever done a PLO heads-up match. It just seems to make it move a lot faster, and we could get a lot more hands dealt. That's why we go with the two dealers. You're not, you're not a GM, you're, a, you're not an organic farmer. You're a, you're a GMO farmer. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking about getting rid of them, though. I think maybe the organic way is better. Is that a check? Thank you. Younger man checks his boat. River brings seven. I got three pair. Mm, that's a, that's good. 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 I, I was like, if I have ace king, do I have the best hand? The answer is yes, if you actually have three pair. <laughs> Am I coming in clear, Rick? Yes, you are. Cool. Little computer okay. showing my end. Sorry about that. No Dog worries. 1,400 people watching right now. We appreciate each and every one of you. Watching a little heads up PLO between two good friends, Dylan Weissman and Jungle Man. A little friendly game, 1500 PLO. What do you guys do with your friends? Well, what? what else? Dylan's going to fire at it. Jungle's going to make the call and win with his queens. Is that a flush? No, it's a pair of queens. Pair of queens win. Pair of queens win. Nice hand. I would never Page try accumulated winnings. Jungle man up 33.50. Once again, I want to tell you one more time about what's happening on the 15th. It's a special ladies event added just last week, actually a few days ago, where it's a $500 buy-in. Whatever the prize pool is, Bill Perkins is going to toss in an additional $50,000 into the prize pool. How about that? It'll be live streamed. The final table will be live streamed right here on the Lodge live stream. And Jamie Kerstetter will be in the bunker, bringing you the action. In addition, the winner of that tournament will have a chance to get a $25,000 sponsorship from Bill Perkins to wear his book, Die With Zero, a t-shirt uh, from tournament to tournament and kind of be a spokesperson for his great book. So get to the lodge. That's a week from tomorrow, the day after Mother's Day. Starts at 10 a.m., $500 buy-in. Whatever the prize pool is, Bill Perkins tossing in an additional 50 k into the prize pool. Not too shabby.
Check mark for Dylan. Check. With Kings. Ace nine. Pair, pair Kings. Amanda Chang says, I want to win even more now so I can get Jamie Kerstetter commentary. She's pretty darn good. Very funny. And there's the lodge cam, folks. That's the cash part of the house. A quarter of the cash tables at the lodge. Front half is filled with cash tables. Back half of the room filled with tournament tables. And then you have another room where the stream studio is with some more tables. Get to the lodge. If you're a poker player... It's as good as everybody says it is. Lots of action, lots of great tournaments, great cash cash tables. I can't wait to go back. I'm sad that uh, my next trip to the lodge won't be until fall, but so it goes. Another great shot of the back half of the house. There's Anthony Chester, the great tournament director, right there in blue. And we must have a little challenge at the table. They're working through that. We're getting a great shot of the Lodge Mahal. Pretty special place, folks. <laughs> well, something must have happened. <laughs> you, you're doing great. <laughs> Might have had a massage chair mishap, but we're all good now. In action, seeing a flop. Dylan, nowhere near that one. Ryan says, "Nice turnout." Yeah, it is. We're. We're real, really happy with the turnout and uh, looking for more this week. It's, it's really right in the middle of it. The main event coming just a few days from now, the 10th through the 16th. Jungle with a rainbow hand, but he still flicks on the call. Why are you wearing those glasses? Two pair. Oh. Two pair for Dylan. Got shot. And a pair for Jungle. Four hundred. I've got so much. River for Dylan. And Jungle's going to have a hand that he is going to want to get a little suspicious with. Pair of aces beats all the bluffs that Dylan could have here. And Dylan is, of course, going to bet with his full house. Could see Jungle calling here relatively quickly, considering he has just one pair. Well, you know, two pair, but one pair in what he's playing. Could even potentially see a raise from jungle because he does have the ace and the seven. That said, it's kind of tough to represent 
a super strong hand on this board when you didn't re-raise preflop, so he wisely chooses to not do that, just lets it go. Action flop here. Dylan with the gut shot straight draw and the nut flush draw. Jungle with top pair and a straight draw. card jungle no, picks no. up two pair now dylan with the nut flush nut flush for dylan Hunter's a bet from Dylan. Jungle's going to come along looking for a 10 or a 6 here. Does not come. Not flush for Dylan. It was interesting to see Dylan lead the turn here. Did not check to the aggressor from the previous street. Just led right into him. Actually, did Dylan check raise flop? My mistake. I think Dylan check raise flop. Quick fold from Jungle on to hand number 84. Today's show. We've been on for about two hours and 20 minutes. Bringing you, that was weird. for the first time ever, a heads up PLO on our live stream. Play later. Oh, it's going to be like that. You, I tried to get you to show me a hand. Which one? When I called, at the beginning of the day, I called your bluff, and then I was like, show, and then you mucked your hand. I don't know which one that was. Yeah. I can show. We can, we can nice. play friendly. I'm not sure about my turn sizing there. I have to look that up, actually. I don't know the answer. You're not sure about your turn bit? My turn sizing. Check. Show the third. I'm supposed to, like, check. I'm not sure about a lot of things. Yeah, it's a tough life. So true. Nines for Jungle Man. He's nine. He's going to get it done. It's nine, rise and shine. Are you for or against daylight savings time? <laughs> uh, I think four, but I don't know. <laughs> we just get up in the, the daylight shine. 
spoken like a true farmer. Crack it down. The roosters are our 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 clock. I don't need to watch this. I don't care about any of that nonsense. I don't care if it's five a.m., seven p.m., somewhere else in the world. Why should I care? Wow, Jungle Man with the six four three two all diamonds. Yeah. And he's got a wrap. That's what a great flop for that hand. Yeah. It's two. Oh. Unless you want a min raise. I don't want a min raise. You can. Queens hold up. We'll see if Jungle decides to put him to the test here. He literally cannot have a lower hand. You could not pick a lower hand on this board. He has six high. Very hard to have just six high when you have four cards. But he found a way here, and I have to imagine he's going to bluff with it, but he doesn't. Wow. That's so interesting to me that you have literally the worst thing you could possibly have, and you check. But Jungle knows more than me about Pot Limit Omaha, yeah, so I'm going to assume there's a good reason for it. You know what we do with coyotes? What we do to coyotes? Unless you don't have them back where you're at. Probably from no, Maryland. No, we, we do. We're, we're, I grew up in, the, in L.A. That's coyote country. That's coyote country. You're right. You know what we do to coyotes. Then. Ain't no mercy for those coyotes. No. Hmm. Limped pot, both players hit trip sevens. Only 200 in the middle. Check. That call on the flop. Second flush draw comes in on the turn. There's the boat for Dylan on the river. Checking to make sure he does not have a straight blocker, which he does not. That cheap. Full house. Full house. Yeah, the river. Rat. I was a river rat that time. Huh? I was a river rat. River rat and me. Looks we'll have plenty of no oh, limit hold them streams up after lot of championship series. We're gonna have a ton of tournament action, but if you want to play. On an upcoming stream, get in touch with Skull Mike. A you know. couple ways to do it. Go I'll to the lodgepokerclub.com website slash live stream. Enough. Fill out the questionnaire. What's that? Or the contact Skull Mike stream. directly on his Instagram or Twitter. At Skull Mike Poker. Start the conversation. Why are you giving him that? We are well, looking for... He's an anxious boy. Have some I openings in late May, June, and the summer. Business. So I don't think that's how anxiety works. <laughs> I think that... It, Skull Mike right on cue in chat. Um, well, he has, he's anxious and he has epilepsy. And no. so, and so, epilepsy is a little different. So if he gets really anxious, he'll have seizures. Oh, that's a bit of a problem. Yeah, and so we give him good drugs. No stick can solve that. Sticks can solve a lot of things, but not that. Not that. That's what we use drugs for. Yeah. 
kick. Now, I was going to say both players kind of playing the middle cards here on this hand, and there are middle cards on the flop. Two pair for jungle with some straight draws of his own, and Dylan with the jack high straight. Dylan checks back the flop, though, decides to pot control with just the jack high straight. Now the spade rolls off on the turn. It's going to kill some action. Two pair. Straight. Straight. Sandbagging. You saved yourself a hundred dollars on the ripper there. True. My bet was gonna. I be, know. My bet was gonna be three hundred dollars. This looks like a sandbagger. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> this has been fun. I don't get to play heads up PLO too much anymore. You get to play it all the time. Open Ender for Jungle Man with the Aces. Now picks up a, still the Open Ender with the Aces. Jungle in the blender on what he wants to do here. Gonna make gonna the bet. It. Quick oh, fold from right. Dylan. Did you bet the pot? I did. Well, I mean the sizing is right. I don't know. If, I don't know your hand, but the sizing is right. I don't know if my hand's right. Hands what matters more than the sizing. Hand matters a lot more. Yeah, yeah. It's like the it's like the farmer who uses uh, the reap the reaper the sky <laughs> or the tractor, right? Who's the, yeah? Which one's the tractor and which one's the farmer? The farmer's the farmer. Farmer's the farmer, oh. but in the wrong hands, a tractor or a scat or any other kind of tool can be used badly. So it's the hands of the farmer that uh, matter us the most. Okay. In case you didn't know, I think you do oh. know. Very important. Matters a lot more than the tool. You can do a real bad job with the tractor, let me tell you. Looks like we're going to have a three-bet pot here. I've seen it. Look at my, uh, my sister's couple nice-looking hands. Oof. Both double-suited. Never the same. Jungle's got the clubs covered, and clubs still almost come. Hit, uh, almost hit a goat. <laughs> real cooler potential runouts here. <laughs> Dylan's got middle pair and a straight draw, along with a flush draw. Nine hundred dollars. <laughs> I think Jungle's just gonna call this hand, but we'll see. Usually when you fast play the not flush draw in Potlamid Omaha, it's because you have a lot of others going on too, like some sort of straight draw or, draw or two pair or something. But it looks like Jungle is going to raise. He knows a lot more than me, so I'm sure he has a good reason for doing it. I made the mistake fast. I think he's making... He got me laughing, and then I bet a hand I shouldn't have. Wow. Jungle gets Dylan to fold. Uh, not plus draw? You, uh, hooting, hollering. I don't think you can handle a tractor. Angela Nine says, is the Lodge going to live stream the women's tournament on the 10th? We are going to live stream the yeah. ladies' tournament, but it's on the 15th. So keep an eye out for that. But I'm supposed to check the flop there. I was too busy laughing. That's right, right there. $500 buy-in. The 15th starts at 10 a.m. I think Yoda said registration through 1245, so make sure you 
are not late for that one. Whatever the prize pool is, whatever number it comes out to be, Bill Perkins is going to dump another 50 grand on top of it as a thank you to all the ladies who play our this great game of poker. My face and my, my head. Yoda says, do not be late. Yoda will be playing. We'll be cheering for Yoda. And the Joe Strazer, the general manager of the lodge, made it available for all the ladies who work here at the lodge to be able to reschedule their time to get off that day so they could play in the tournament if they wanted to. thought that was a fantastic move. By the lodge. There's a boat for Dylan. Straight for Jungle Man here, but to go along with his flush. He's got a flush and a straight, but a boat for Dylan. Pots it. 28. 28. Is that so? Is that so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shitty Boy? Pretty brutal run out for jungle here. Even the farmers need to do a bit math. They got math class on the farm. He doesn't have any pair blockers, oh, which would make good. him a little bit more likely to call. Actually. Math class is actually kind of popular on the farm. That's what made me so good at cards. Bluff me? Maybe. Thanks a good fold. Nice one from Jungle there. You try to bluff me? I had one too many eights. Three eights is lucky, you know. That is true. I even had a jack and three eights. Lot of Jungle Man, three bets, and we'll take it down. I got business. Got a, got a, you know, family to take care of. Yeah, me too. You do? I got a partner and a puppy. Puppies are expensive, I told you. Anastasia will give us three. Yeah. Okay. 
trip fours for Dylan. Ain't need to bet that much, boy. I just picked a random number. Six is, seemed like a good one. I'm going to let you know one more time about the main event coming around this week, May 10th through the 16th, $2 million guarantee, $3,000 buy-in last year. Alan Bauer in the white suit there. What a sharp individual. Won $374,800. Thank you. Finishing first. To your haters, Get to the lodge for the main event. Second annual lodge championship series. <laughs> it's, you need a response for that. I really do. <laughs> I really, that's, that's a good I'm cracking open our beer, Rick. Nice. Settling in. You deserve it. Settling in. got a problem with you is what doctor are you? Now you got a problem. Yeah. Can't eat speechless. Yeah. Oh no. It's the best hand I've had all day. Really pretty. Oh, I love this game. It's so fun. I think heads up, heads up, Hilo is my first ever favorite game. Tournaments have started to take over, but this is so fun. For the first time ever, heads up PLO in our studio under the lights. I like to mix it up every now and then. Two pair for jungle. Wheel for Dylan on the turn, and it stays the best hand. Farm boys are gullible. What's that? I said I hear farm boys are gullible. Who told you that? That's what they say in the city. Let's bring your shitty folk next time. We'll have a real game. I'll bring my farm boys. We'll have a little showdown. <laughs> you can even play in the prairie if you want. Play when the <laughs> sun go down. I like when Jungle starts the statement, He's as he calls here. I like when Jungle starts a statement, and he clearly didn't plan for the end of the statement. It's just like getting on a train, no idea what the destination is. Exactly. When I, when I said that it's great. Gullible, it would uh, get your, what is it, get your uh, stirrups in a bunch? <laughs> Armchair PC tuning about, in boy. from the UK. Something. Us farm boys think you city boys are soft. <laughs> You and your technology, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You and your... Us soy boys. Yeah, soy boys is right. Soy you boys. Soy. So I, that's why I limp so much. Oh, to be I'm, fair, I'm we scared. actually do like soy. But, <laughs> listen, I don't think you guys would last one week on the farm, taking care of the animals, watering the crops out in the hot, hot uh, uh, southern sun. <laughs> Facing the uh, facing the the Midwest storms. Hennings were red. There'd be, there'd be a problem with the farm. You guys won't know what to do without your TVs and your uh, your uh, where are they? Those those, uh, those stupid. Like bike people stand on, whatever those things are, look make make you all look all stupid. I forget what them called, gyroscopes, something like that. Gyroscope. What the heck? I mean, you got those on the farm. Got to be able to work a tractor and all the buttons. 
Or if you don't work the tractor, you gotta work the plow, and there's no chance you can survive the plow. <laughs> Check. Check. Oh. Think you can round up a bunch of sheep, lead them home, find the lost sheep? Think you can do any of that? Or round up a steer? What if the steer starts charging at you? I'd be scared. Should be. I know you would be. You've actually been on the farm. Imagine your city boys. Haven't been. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <sighs> That you couldn't even drive a tractor in a straight line. Your tractors have training wheels? <laughs> Your city boys might have to invent them. I think you're right. We'll make a class. It'll be like the farm lot. It'll be your doctor. Doctor of... Uh, Pharmology. Check. Boat skis for Dylan on the turn. Nothing doing for jungle. Is it possible to stretch my leg? I didn't think so. Farm boy could dream. My arms at least. Yeah. I'm gonna stretch this. Jungle play in the mids, Dylan play in the lows. And the lows yeah. take it. Dylan with a wrap and a pair. Jungle Man still in the lead with the overpair though. Ooh, 10's full for Jungle now on the turn. Races to 1500. Not well timed. Drawing completely dead. Jungle comes along. Let's see a river here. Dylan's got an open ender here. Another three comes out. You know, Dylan could have a three here. He yeah. would check raise the turn with some threes. So Jungle is not loving that card. No, that's not a good card for Jungle. And Dylan's going to fire at it. That's the pot. That was a really bad card. Really bad card. Yeah, Jungle says really bad card. Looks like he's probably just going to call. I don't know, so can't imagine him getting away from this. Great spot. Now it's a pretty bad spot. I think I can't fold, but I'm not sure. Wow, he actually is considering folding. I don't know. I mean, he's clearly not considering raising once he One goes into speech mode. Ones. Damn city sicklers. Makes the call. Hands full. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, damn city, city slicker going at it again, trying to rip quad threes. Yeah, I had the, the best hand to do it with, too. Gotta do it sometimes. Nice hand. Gotta do it sometimes. 
Nice little ten thousand eight hundred dollar pot goes to Jungle Man. Yeah, nice one for him. Shout out to the people in chat who said there's no bluffing in PLO. Can't hold that. It's the second nuts. Actually, maybe it's a physical different hands. I don't know. Do you have any straight cards? Hmm? It's an interesting hand. I was not planning on bluffing the river other than that exact card. So. Thank you, Kelly, Kelly once again. Yeah, you, that's funny. Kelly Shields, how's the match going? Any details of this yet? What are you talking about specifically? This match right now? If so, we're going to be playing for another, I, I believe, hour, 45 yeah. minutes or so. Somewhere in that vicinity. It is just timed. Whenever the players wanted to stop, that's when they stop. Yeah, a lot of our streams, folks, uh, you know, like we ended last night after 11 hours and the players continue to play as I was leaving the lodge. So stream has to end at some point every day because of the staff involved. King eight. That's going to win. Great King eight. It's going to win. Jogoban up 2,500 on the day. It's been a little bit of a back and forth, but still really not too much blood. I think the peak, Dylan was maybe up 5K at, at, its, at the most. We've only had the one all in, and they ended up running it twice and chopping. Thank you all with for a rare preflop fold. Yeah, thank you all for joining us on a Sunday afternoon here at the Lodge live stream. As Mike yeah. alluded to, probably another 30 minutes or so. And do you know how much longer do we have? We'll call it a day. Thank you. And come back. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. On Thursday, for some more live stream action. New schedule is Thursday. Through Sunday, we will have some special days during the Lodge Championship Series where we'll stream that's not a Thursday. For instance, the Monday ladies' final table, the 15th, and the 16th, the final table of the main event. Nothing to worry about, uh, ladies. <laughs> so that's week after next. for jungle here. Dylan's going to fire at it. Dylan also with trips. Kind of a similar hand earlier today. Jungle had the boat. Dylan had trips. Yeah, Dylan just won out. Plus, he's got a lot of brutal cards for him. That's not one of them, at least. He didn't vote up or make a straight. But he still could lose another bet or even his stack here.
Look at the intensity in Jungle's eyes here as he's staring down Dylan and getting absolutely torn up by that massage therapist. <laughs> Dylan does check. I imagine jungle's just gonna pot it. Feels like seven's full jungle. Wow. I think you have. Quick and accurate read from Dylan there. Wow. Often that raises. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Nice time I block, so it's really bad side cards. Feels like seven's full. You dumped that four five at a high frequency. Lays it down. Seven full. Wow, great, great fold from Dylan there. What'd you have? Uh, four, six, eight, ten. Six, four, six, eight, nine. You had four, six, eight, nine. I had eight, nine, two. Hmm? I had eight, nine, two. What else? Eight, nine, seven, seven. That makes sense. When you called the turn, I was not happy. It felt like seven, seven. But I personally call turn a little light in that spot sometimes. That's fair. No. I didn't want to. I was very happy when I didn't improve, actually. Very sad when you didn't improve. Very happy. Uh, you know what they say, guys, with the uh, small hands. <laughs> Not good on the farm. Not good around the animals. Not very handy with the tools. I want to thank our dealers today, Palacio Anthony, Anastasia right there, Miranda, also the great folks in the production room who worked till about 2 a.m. this morning from yesterday's stream and then back at it today. Couldn't do this production without them. Both players with some interesting cards here. The farm boy don't never learn. Put some face cards out there. Make something exciting here, Anastasia. Soy boy. Soy boy. City boy. All spades. Neither player with a spade in their hand. Ah. I don't think that's your sizing, Jungle. Really? No. Uh -huh. like, 5,400 mil. You bet a fifth pot. What? Bet a fifth pot. I guess you're right. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You tell me. Did you check the percentage of Check or bet a fifth? Really? I think so. Okay, big soy boy. Appreciate that. Does that make sense? I had a, that's the best hand I could have seen you have. I had ace-king jack done. I, don't know, I was talking to Jungle. I know the pot looks mighty stupid, I'm not gonna lie. And I know us farm boys may come off mighty stupid every now and then. But uh, farm boys can handle the rough times. Keep that in mind. I believe that. That's what we make up for our lack of uh, city smarts for our grid. Grit is highly valued in the farm. Check. That's where I feel like you city boys might lack of. Yeah, you're not wrong. Grit not wrong. You're soft. I'm not so sure. Maybe you're not so soft. I don't know, but your boys. Check. Man, lots of soy boys. Nope. Straight for jungle here. He'll take down another pot. 
Rick, have you been playing any LCS events? I played the seniors event. And no luck? No luck. I, I, um, I was 10 from the money. Had my kings run into aces. You know, the old story. I think I'm going to play an Classic event story. this week. I, I've just got to pick one out either tomorrow, Tuesday, or Wednesday. I've got some time. I should either bet 300 or 400 here. I don't know. Going to look at the schedule. 400. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Tomorrow, tomorrow Tuesday, 9, or Wednesday, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, $300 no limit hold them tomorrow. Event 16. There you go. Black chip bounty Tuesday at, Tuesday evening. You, if you a good one too. Wednesday's sat Wednesday's satellite day at the lodge. All a bunch of satellites to the the main event and a satellite to the 10k high roller. So that's not really the day to play a tournament unless you're trying to play another tournament after, you know. <laughs> yeah, you might have had me at the $300 tournament tomorrow. Five yellows. Huh? Five yellows. Five yellows. Should be a good one. Thank you. A lot of trophies still to give out in the LCS. Oh, the trophies are fire. Every trophy is interesting. They've got them displayed around the room. I love the Lodge trophies. Yeah, they... Where'd you keep that? You had two yellow, you had two the yellow, committee that does two that two deserves a pat on the back. Because oh, okay, okay. they're all different. I wouldn't lie to you. Something you'd love to display. Past life, I was dirty Dan. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true, yeah, Jungle. The simple farmer life is much better than the dirty Dan life. Uh, dirty Dan life seems all, all like parties and riches at first. Then uh, goes around, comes around, get the, get the you know, get whacked. Just like Yanni, good to see you in chat. <laughs> Johnny loves playing poker and drinking his beverage of choice. Good guy, Yanni. Got a three-bet pot happening here and a jack-high flop. Two pair for Dylan, top set and a straight draw for Jungle Man. Dylan's in a world of hurt here. He's only started this hand with 6,500, 65 big blinds. I believe you. Andrew McNamara asked, what does black chip bounty mean? Black chip bounty is a uh, $100 bounty on each player. Black chips at the lodge are $100. So when each player buys in, they get a $100 black chip. And if someone knocks them out, they give that black chip to the player who knocked them out. So by the end, you have a bunch of black chips. And by the way, if you knock someone out, and then get knocked out. You still keep all the ones that you won. So it's not like you surrender all your black chips when you get lo when you uh, get busted. You only surrender your single black chip like that kind of is representing your bounty. Not that dirty. Not that dirty. Yeah, the first time I ever played in a bounty tournament years ago, I did not know that. I I, I said, well, I doesn't the last guy have all the bounties then? <laughs> no nine or ten. No, you get to keep the ones you win. You have to give up yours that you're given. Representing exactly. your tournament life. Uh, looks like 98 or 99. There are, there are tournaments online as we see the cumulative winnings. And Dylan has added on, by the way. Thank you for the person in chat who corrected me. Good thing. Dylan's down 10,000 here. A little while to go to come back. Yeah, there are something called progressive knockout tournaments online, which is kind of in between. You, uh, when you knock someone out, half of the bounty you win from them goes into your bounty and half the bounty goes into your pocket. So by the end, at the final table, there's a bunch of variety of different bounty sizes, some really, really big, and it makes it really, really interesting because knocking out one player is can be more valuable than knocking out oh, another player because nice. they've accumulated more bounties. So it ends up being pretty cool 
type of tournament. They're very popular online these days. Huh. <laughs> Gambling guru, guru said, my friend had a few chips on break and he just took the $100 bounty and left and he's not allowed at Mohegan Sun anymore. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Oh my thanks for, goodness. Thanks for, thanks for sharing that, Guru. As we see Dylan hit his wrap on the turn. Ten high straight for him. Three spades on the board. Brick on the river. Jungle with two pair. Could think he has the best hand here against a bet. I think Dylan's going to come with a bet, though. I've been wrong more times than I'd like to admit about what's going to happen today. I'm just not a PLO player. And yeah, that's you, okay, Rick. No, it's done, okay. You've done a great job. Always Too many cards. It. 1,100. It's the bet from Dylan with his straight. Took all my black ones. Trying to put some grass in there. Two pair. Straight. For Jungle Man, he makes the call. Dylan's gonna take down that pot. Now, always, I want to before we're coming down to the last two hands, folks. I want to give a big thank you to you, Mike, who. We put this together rather, rather hastily, and I said, Mike, uh, can you join me? I know Skull is going to be playing some tournaments today, and I need uh, some help. And you uh, carved out some prime Sunday time and appreciate it, Mike. Yeah, no problem at all. I'm actually going to be working <laughs> You're probably right, right after this. I don't think I want to Because I have to, uh, I have to prepare for the upcoming Upswing course really launch. We're see. launching a huge new course tomorrow. For yeah, tournament yeah. players, if you are a tournament player and you're listening or watching, I highly recommend checking out the upcoming Road to Victory course on Upswing Poker coming out tomorrow. And who was the collaborators on that one? Yeah, it's created by Darren Elias, who is a yeah. phenomenal player, as we see Jungle Man flop top set here. Darren Elias, phenomenal player, one of the most, if not the most successful player of all time <laughs> in... Gonna let them finish laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Darren Elias, one of if not the most successful big field tournament player ever. If it's a thirty-five hundred or a five thousand dollar buy-in tournament with like thousands of players, there's no guy you want to stake more than Darren Elias. The guy's a monster, and he's working with Nick Petrangelo, a phenomenal tournament player who plays all the biggest buy-ins around the world. It's an incredible course, so definitely go check that out over on upswingpoker.com. Fantastic stuff. And we're coming down to the last hand, folks. Hand number 116. Can't pass it up. Went about three hours today for your viewing entertainment. Gang on the farm boy. You go back to that city. Pot. See what I got. Got some experience in this domain. Dylan, four bets. I got a real, a real uh, pot size kid. bet. <clears throat> Me too. Huh? And we are going to see <laughs> some final Again, stats as Hopefully. these players Hopefully. may continue. Thank you both. Appreciate you. To play it. Thank you, man. Out in the main room. I know a lot of mixed games going on right now. Cumulative winnings. Jungle Man got the best of it today. Won $8,050 in the Heads Up Challenge. We have never done this before. We appreciate y'all tuning in. And Mike, any final thoughts? Yeah, you know, honestly, not as much blood as I was hoping for. We really only saw one big, like, pot that was scooped by one of the players, which was that pot not long ago where Dylan attempted a bluff. But you know, that's how it goes sometimes. PLO can be a very defensive and passive game. And uh, we still got some good action, still got to hear some fun and not-so-fun conversations. So I was happy to be here. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Appreciate it. Yeah.
well said. And, uh, hey, folks, we'll continue every now and then throwing a different curveball into the live streams. Not always going to be just hold them. We're going to be doing a lot of tournament this week for the LCS. Folks, have a great West rest of your weekend. We'll see everybody back on Thursday, 3 p.m. Central, on the Lodge live stream. Take care, everybody.